There are a lot of trendy drinks out there these days. All kinds of fruity, low calorie, sugar free kinds of drinks. And I wanted to do this video to address three of the most popular trendy drinks right now so that you can determine which ones are best and what you should look for when you're looking at a label with one of these trendy drinks. Now the most popular one that we're seeing all over the place are juices. Okay, they've been around for a long time and most of us know not to go and get a juice from Concentrate down the juice aisle of the grocery store. But the thing is a lot of us have resorted to going to juice bars or we buy these juices that say they're fresh squeezed. Well, there's some things that we really need to pay attention to when it comes to juicing. Now, the main one is that we lose a lot of the nutritional value. And I think a lot of us know that in the back of our minds, but a lot of times we want to put it out because it feels so good to drink a juice. Well, it feels good because you're not having a lot of digestive stimuli. You're not having to really break down a lot of food. So yeah, it, you feel good after you drink them, but the thing is you're missing out on a lot of the nutrients. But the other thing is you're also getting a concentrated amount of sugar most of the time. In fact, according to a 2008 study by the Diabetes Care Association, it was found after following 70,000 nurses around for six months that were documenting the diets of their patients, that patients that consumed equal amounts of fruit in terms of juice versus regular fruit had astonishing differences. Now what the difference was is those that consumed the juices had a much higher risk of developing diabetes and a much higher controlled blood sugar throughout the day versus those that were consuming the same amount of fruit by way of eating actual fruit. And a lot of times what it came down to was the extra fiber that was in the fruit that they were actually consuming versus immediately just consuming the juice. So what this is telling us is that there's a lot that we're missing out when we're juicing. So at the end of the day, it's best to try to mix your fruits and vegetables into a blender, into some form of a smoothie versus just juicing them all the time. And if you are gonna buy a juice off the shelf, try to find one that is cold pressed because a lot of times when they're cold pressed, the molecules are a little bit smaller. So what happens is you get a lot more in the way of nutrients. Those nutrients don't just get obliterated with the pulp that ends up getting washed away when you go through the juicing process. Now the other thing you wanna look for when you're looking for a juice is you wanna find one that has a lower calorie, lower sugar content base. So if you look at the first ingredient of your juice, you're gonna to wanna to see one that says, say, cucumber juice or celery juice. Now that may not be as sweet of a taste, but you're looking at a lot less of a fructose impact from celery and cucumber than you would be from say, orange juice. Now if fruit is your thing, try to find one that has apple juice as the base since apple juice is relatively low glycemic in the grand scheme of things. The next trendy drink on my list are those flavored waters. Now we're long past the days of aspartame, you know, like a lot of us know now that aspartame isn't good. And if you look around, a lot of the diet sodas have even started switching over to using Splenda as their sweetener as the general population starts to grow accustomed to the fact that aspartame really isn't all that great for us. But we still have to be careful. So a lot of these fitness waters, these waters that have a little bit of sweeteners in them just to make it easy to get them down, we really have to be careful. You're usually sweetened with Splenda. And there was a recent study by the Journal of Toxicology that was pretty eye-opening, especially for someone like me that's always looking at digestive health. Now it was found that those that consumed Splenda over the course of about 12 weeks had a 50% reduction in their gut flora. Now what this means is they're losing 50% of the healthy gut bacteria that's normally breaking down food and helping you assimilate. Now I can only hypothesize myself when I say that that's gonna make a pretty big impact in what you absorb from what you eat. And to add insult to injury, there are even some studies now that are starting to link artificial sweeteners to an insulin response. Now in short, what this could ultimately mean is that when you consume an artificial sweetener, your pancreas might be secreting insulin just as it ordinarily would with a traditional sugar that isn't zero calorie. So it might be just as bad, if not worse, to consume these zero calorie drinks than it would be to just drink a soda in the first place, which ultimately I don't recommend either. So you have to ask yourself, what do you get? What do you do? Well, fortunately, there's a lot of drinks that are coming out that are now sweetened with stevia. Now, again, there's a lot of science out there that's trying to combat stevia, but as of right now, it's pretty inconclusive, and we're finding that stevia is ultimately seeming to be pretty safe. So try to find a drink that's sweetened with stevia, maybe it's sweetened with a little bit of agave or a little bit of honey instead. The last trendy drink that I wanna talk about is one that my clients approach me about all the time. And the intentions are good of this drink. We're talking about kombucha. It's everywhere. You walk into any Whole Foods market, you're gonna see wall-to-wall 
of kombucha. The thing is, like I said, the intentions are good. The idea behind kombucha is to be a fermented tea that's gonna help aid in basically producing more gut bacteria, giving you a healthy gut biome. That's all fine and dandy, but we have to look at what happens when you make kombucha. A lot of times sugars are added to feed the fermentation process. Well, a lot of times they add too much sugar and that sugar doesn't really get consumed in that fermentation process. So you're left with a lot of excess sugar that you're just flat out consuming and your body's utilizing as energy or attempting to utilize as energy. Now, additionally, since kombucha is getting so much more popular now, we're starting to add more and more sugars and more and more artificial flavors to them to try to make them a little bit more enticing so that people drink them. And as time goes on, kombucha has evolved from a healthy fermented tea into a trendy health drink that might not be quite so healthy. And there's some interesting science, and it's pretty much dead even on whether kombucha in general is good or bad. You see, one study went out there and found that kombucha can actually contribute to metabolic acidosis, which is basically increasing your pH. And then another study went out there and found that kombucha is actually benefiting the liver and preventing liver infection. So we kind of have two things to look at here, but basically at the end of the day, it's still pretty even keeled. So what can you do if you like kombucha? Well, the solution is to find a local kombucha that doesn't have a lot of preservatives in it. If you can find someone that is making kombucha locally and selling it at your local market, that's gonna be your best choice. Because when you start going with the bigger name kombuchas, unfortunately preservatives are added just so that it has more of a shelf life. Whenever possible, try to get your kombucha on tap and try to just get regular, plain old kombucha flavor. Don't go for all the crazy fun additives. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos and don't hate me because I'm trying to spoil the fun drinks for you. I'm just trying to give you what you need so that you can make an educated decision and do what's best for you to get in the best shape of your life. I'll see you in the next video.